Social expectation drowns us all inside. What you have should be what I want, 'cause what I have just ain't alright. The clothes I wear, the way I comb my hair, how I live, oh I don't care. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You will have to make amends where possible. The procedure to make repentance is to make amends for every wrong for which amends can be made. For example, if anyone has misappropriated someone's trust, if he makes a repentance, then it will not be approved unless he repays that man or makes amends with him or convinces him to forgive him because it is possible to make amends. Similarly, if he has caused grievance to someone, then again it is possible to make amends, so you must meet him and ask to be pardoned. The same procedure applies in seeking repentance for violating rights of Allah. For instance, if he has not paid zakat, and this can be atoned, he will have to pay zakat. At the same time, at the same time as repentance, he will make an atonement. Similarly, if salat or fasting were neglected, he will atone for that and then repent. Redeeming past omissions. Many people say vociferously, that there is nothing as redeeming past omissions. And they cite in support the hadith, Al-Islam yahdimu ma kana qablahu, which means that if one becomes a Muslim, then the sins that he had committed before embracing Islam are waived. Thus, if he becomes a Muslim at his age of 70, then he will not have to offer previous salat but will pray from the day he became a Muslim onwards repentance is not the same some people have assumed repentance to be like embracing Islam thus they hold that if anyone has not offered salat in the past and repents now then he did not redeem his past salat this is not correct Repentance is not the same as becoming a Muslim. A man who becomes a Muslim was a kafir, a disbeliever before that. So the commands of Islam did not address him. But he was commanded to believe and join Islam. Salat was not fard on him because it is fard when he becomes a Muslim. So he is not required to redeem his past salat. As for a Muslim, Salat is fard for him the moment he attains puberty. And if he does not offer Salat, then he continues to be liable to pray them. Whenever he repents for having omitted them, then the principle of repentance is that wherever, whatever amends can be made, he must make up for the omission. Otherwise, repentance is not acceptable. Thus, he must redeem the missed salah. In the same way, he will have to redeem the fast he has missed and which remain due on him. Repentance does not get a waiver. If we ponder over it, there is no reason why a man who does not offer salah for a number of years should be given a waiver for his omission when he repents while another man has been praying Salat regularly over these years, this is not reasonable. Some people say that if anyone misses Salat for a day, then he must redeem them. But if he misses Salat for more than one day, then he need not redeem them, but he may only make a repentance. This is strange logic. This has afforded an opportunity to people who miss a day's Salat for they omit some more and then argue that they are not required to make a redemption now. This is nonsense. It is a principle of repentance 
that when atonement is possible, that must be made. Repentance of an alcoholic. Suppose that a man consumed wine for a number of years, after which he repented. For him it would be enough to repent, because he cannot make an atonement. Repentance of a thief. Suppose a thief stole someone's money and consumed it. If he repents later, then his repentance will not be accepted unless he returns money to its owner or gets pardon from him. In this case, atonement is possible. Repentance for neglected zakah. Suppose someone had not paid zakat in the past. If he is inspired to repent for his sin, then as long as he does not pay the past dues of zakah, his repentance will not be accepted. The same applies to salah and fasting. And unless past omissions are made up, they are not forgiven. Offer salat and leave instructions. Nevertheless, the detailed repentance is that one should look at one's past life and examine if he has omitted to give rights of Allah or of Allah's slaves. Rights of Allah include salah. He must calculate how many he has missed and make up his mind to redeem them. He must begin by writing down in a notebook how many salah are due on him. And if he does not remember, then he must make an estimate. Then he must write down the date on which he began to offer them and write down his resolve. With every current salat, I will redeem a past salat and write down here those that I have redeemed. If I die before having redeemed all of them, I instruct my heirs to pay a fidya against the neglected salat from my property. Not wajib without instructions. If a man leaves behind no such instruction, then his heirs are not bound to pay fidya against his salah, no matter how much wealth he leaves behind. It is only wajib on the heirs if he leaves instructions to the effect that the limit and the limit is one third of his wealth and property. They are not liable to pay beyond one third of his legacy. Redeem zakat and fasting and leave instructions. The same applies to fasting. He must make a note as he had for salat and leave instructions to his heirs in the same way that they should pay fidya on his death for the remaining. In the same way he must calculate zakat that is payable by him for the past years and note it down. He should also write down the amounts he begins to pay and instructions to his heirs to pay that which remains to be atoned from one third of the legacy. This is the detailed repentance. This is what a sheikh asks a new disciple to do when he comes to him for training. May Allah enable us to observe these teachings. Amin. Resolve not to break sins. Sorry. Resolve not to sin. Sometimes this resolve breaks. Someone wrote to Maulana Tanwi, Rahmatullah I make repentance every week, but after one day, all the resolve, etc., wears out and fase isa. This is something that everyone goes through in his life. A man makes repentance. He asks Allah to forgive him for all his previous sins. He resolves firmly not to commit sin again, but the next day, all his resolve peters off. He again commits sin. This happens often to everyone. First, remorse. In fact, let me say one more thing. When this happens, man begins to doubt whether his repentance was sincere or not. There are three conditions for repentance, and when they are met, repentance is sincere. Man regrets, and his heart is full of remorse 
for his past misdeeds. He is ashamed. He confesses and affirms that he has sinned. If he does not have any of these things, but shows boldness, then it is not repentance. If he does not see his sin as a sin, then this is a very dangerous attitude. May Allah protect every Muslim from this attitude. Amin. So the first condition for repentance is remorse and regret. Ya Allah, I have erred gravely. I confirm my guilt. Please do forgive me. Second condition, give it up. The second condition without which repentance is not accepted is to give up the sin forthwith. Without this, there is no repentance. He cannot say that he repents and persists with the sin. Third, the resolve. The third condition is that he makes a resolve not to commit that sin again and not even approach it. These are the three conditions of repentance. Casting doubt on the resolve. As for the first condition, most believers fulfill it. As for the second, this too is generally met. But as far as the third condition is concerned, most people are unsure if they stand up to it or not. For when a man repents, he is worried how far he will succeed in keeping away from sin. In his resolve, is his resolve firm in the face of this doubt and uncertainty? When that is so, is his repentance true? Thus this man is worried. This fear is not a blot on repentance. Pay attention to this. For repentance to be perfect and true, undoubtedly resolve is necessary. But the fear whether the resolve will materialize or peter out, simply, this fear is not a blot on repentance. When a man makes, makes a firm resolve, then it is firm in spite of the fear and his repentance is not faulty, inshallah. An example. Suppose that you have constructed a building. On your part, you have left no stone unturned to raise a strong edifice and you have used proper material at every age. But you are apprehensive of an earthquake or any other kind of accident due to which the building might collapse. Surely you cannot say that because of your apprehension, the building is not strong. Rather, it is strong. And your apprehension is also correct, for which you must adopt some other measures. I do not say this on my own, nor can I make bold to say so. Rather, I had heard this from one of my elders, the Honorable Baba Najme Ahsan Rahmatullah who was a companion of Maulana Tanwi Rahmatullah and a wonderful saint and wali. He emphasized in all his gatherings that people imagine that it is not easy to walk on the religious path, but to a brother make repentance every day. One day I asked him, respected Maulana, you say always that we should make repentance. But we always have doubts about our resolve. We might commit the sin again. He said, you will not commit the sin, inshallah. If you are apprehensive, then that will not dampen your resolve. Later I came across this message in a number of Maulana Tanwi sayings, Rahmatullah alayhi. He explained that this fear does not render the resolution defective. Inshallah, the repentance is valid once a firm intention is formed. The sin is erased. The moment you make repentance, Allah erases all the sins that you had committed till then. Observe the mercy of Allah. It is not that when you repent, only the sin is forgiven, leaving it in your record of deeds. Rather, all the sins are effaced 
from the record, erased from the record, and they do not find mention anywhere, lest you feel ashamed in the hereafter. Our account books have a column each for debt, credit, and balance. But your book of deeds with Allah has no entry whatsoever against debit once you make a repentance and sincerely ask him to forgive you. They are only credit entries. You will be rewarded on that inshallah. As-Sattar will conceal your sins. According to a hadith, Allah will summon one of his slaves and speak to him in private tell me did you commit the sin in the world he will say yes I did that and that one too he will affirm that he had committed that too after the sins are enumerated and confirmed Allah will say to him I had concealed your faults in the world and no one had learnt about your sins only I know of them besides you Today, I forgive you your sins. Thus, even there in the next world, no one will be told of those sins. Allah will conceal them in this manner. Once a perfect repentance is made, Allah will forgive the sins. Not only forgive the sins, He will also delete them, delete them from the records that there is no mention of them anywhere. So for the person to be embarrassed and made to feel ashamed on the day of Qiyamah. Pray to Allah for adherence to repentance. If you fear that you might commit the sin again, do not let it worry you. Rather, pray to Allah alone about this fear. Oh Allah, I have made the repentance, but unless you give me strength, I will not be able by myself to adhere to my repentance. Give me strength and firmness of purpose. O oh Allah, my limbs are in your hand. This is one of the duas of the noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma inna kulubana wa nawasiyana wa jawari hanabi adik lam tumalikna minha shay'a faida faal tadhalika bina fakun anta waliyana Wahdina ila sawa is sabil. O Allah, our hearts, our foreheads, and our limbs are in your hand. You have not made us master of any of these. So when they are what you own, be our guardian then and guide us to the straight path. Give us what pleases you. Pray to Him also that this our heart mind, tongue, hands, feet, and all limbs are in his grasp. So, O oh Allah, keep them steadfast, for we have no power over them. And make this prayer also. Allahumma innaka sa'altana min anfusina ma la namlikuhu illa bika fa'atina ma yurudika anna Wallah, you have asked us for that over which we are not masters except through you. So bestow upon us that which pleases you with us. So make a firm repentance and pray to Allah. Keep us steadfast on our resolve. Long journey to become steady. The letter of the disciple to Maulana contained the second issue. I make a repentance every week, but the next day, my resolve wears off. This is a common problem to all of us. The Maulana Rahmatullah commenced his reply by quoting a poem of Maulana Jami, Rahmatullah. It says that no Sufi can become a real Sufi until he drinks sediment too with the water. When that is tolerated by him, Allah purifies him. And to remove the fault in man, and to make him adept, a day and a night are not enough. It is a long journey to achieve that. Do not give up till the last breath. 
The Maulana Rahmatullah also quoted from a poem of Maulana Rumi Rahmatullah which says that you will always have to cut and repair on this path. You will always have to cut and repair on this path. So do not convince yourself that you are reformed, but keep trying till death. Never surrender caution, for your nafs may sting you at any moment. It's like a snake. Sometimes it goes into a hibernation period. A florist has to tend to his flowers ceaselessly. And if he sits idle, then he will find wild growth. So man too has to attend to his soul, attend to his nafs ceaselessly. Now cutting here, now repairing there. And he cannot sit idle for a moment. After all, there is grant. The third poem that the Honorable Maulana quoted has this message. If Allah enables one to turn to him always till the last breath, then there surely is grant from him. Make a fresh resolve. After he quoted the three poems, the Maulana Rahmatullah wrote, the gist of the matter is that you should continue to think of it and to try, inshallah, you will succeed in this way. He meant that even if you break your resolve repeatedly, do not feel dejected and do not give up, but face it by making a fresh, firm resolve every time you break a past resolve. Keep this up till the last. Do not give up hope. Do not surrender. I break my resolve again and again. So I do not resolve anymore? No, this hopelessness is not correct. Rather, your resolve should be more firm. There is strength in man's intention. Allah has placed great strength in man's resolve. Through this, man has conquered lofty mountains, landed on the moon and on Mars, discovered the tiniest atom, and made atom and hydrogen bombs. So use the strength of resolve to combat the base self, to combat the nafs and the devil, to keep away from sin. If you do it once, then you get up fresh with a new resolve to combat it with renewed vigor. Surrender means defeat. In the beginning, in the beginning there is hesitancy. When man hears the Quran and Hadith or sermons of the elders, he thinks that he should quit sin and take the right path and a zeal comes to him. But his nafs, being accustomed to sin, takes him on the opposite direction. How true is this? In the beginning there is hesitancy. When man hears the Quran and Hadith or sermons of the elders, he thinks that he should quit sin and take the right path. But his nafs, being accustomed to sin, takes him on the opposite direction. Now there is a tussle between an inclination to impiety and piety. The soul gets the better. The nafs gets the better of the inclination to piety because it is stronger. The soul gets the better of the inclination to piety because it is stronger and has the ability to commit sin while the inclination to piety is not yet strong so the nafs overcomes. If the inclination to piety, so there is a, tuss a tussle, there is a tussle between both. The soul gets the better, or I should say the nafs gets the better of the inclination to piety because it is stronger and has ability to commit sin while the inclination to piety is not yet strong. If the inclination to piety gives up the fight, then it is written off, deeply routed. Soul will decline always. But if the inclination to piety is convinced that each time it falls, it gets renewed strength, then it will combat its enemy 
with fresh vigor and determination, it just has to be convinced. That inclination to piety just has to be convinced that every time, each time it falls, it gets renewed strength, then it will combat its enemy with fresh vigor and determination. It will withstand a little longer and not be knocked out in the first round, though it will fall long in that combat. Then it will get up afresh with more determination than the first two times and give a tougher fight. Gradually, inclination to piety will knock out the base soul, the nafs. But this will go on all life. Now, sometimes this side, piety, now evil, get in the upper hand. Soon, Allah will give extraordinary strength to piety so that desire to do evil will decline into near oblivion. Be wary until your last breath. However, the strongest of wrestlers never give up caution. They never stop exercise and practice. Rather, the inclination to piety has to be wary and prepared always, otherwise it will be routed. So even if the inclination to piety even if that inclination has defeated the nafs, the base desires, and the devil, it must keep its strength to the last breath. Never for a moment must it sit idle. Resolve weakens on sight of sin. As we have said, every person faces the problem of a weakening resolve. So do not worry. When that happens, make another repentance and say, Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli dhanbin wa tubu ilayhi. I seek forgiveness of Allah, Lord, from every sin, and I repent to Him. When one sees sin, his resolve weakens. But when he makes repentance, it throws out sin. Hundreds of broken promises of reforming and glasses of wine lie before me. Then Allah gives strength to promise so that only glasses break. If a man loses hope in the beginning and resigns, then he will be lost. May Allah protect all Muslims. Ameen. Cease. Cease. Every time your repentance is violated and resolve breaks, make a fresh repentance. This is the treatment. Allah's mercy knows no bounds. Elsewhere, you may be pardoned once, twice, or thrice, but not always. You may be thrown out if you persist, but Allah's mercy proclaims, if you have broken your resolve a hundred times, come, come make another repentance. It will be accepted. Your repentance will be accepted till before you get the pangs of death. In this way, if you do not cease to repent, you will succeed at last. Do not lose hope. Do not give up. Do not stop trying. Allah will give you success. Speak to Allah. Dr. Abdul Hay Rahmatullah used to say, Oh man, keep speaking to Allah. Say, Ya Allah, I will not come through this flood of sin. I cannot cope with it. Oh Allah, I will not come through. I cannot cope with it. Save me. Save me. Do not punish me. You have power over everything. I entrust myself to you. Talk to Allah. It is Allah's way that he does not reject this prayer. Learn from the Prophet Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam, Prophet Jonah. The Honorable Dr. Abdul Hay rahmatullah alayhi also said often that in the account of Sayyiduna Yunus alayhi salam, Allah has disclosed the surprise in fact that Sayyidina Yunus salam, stayed in the belly of the whale, the belly of the fish, for three days. Let me interrupt with a word from my respected father, Rahmatullah alayhi, that in the sight of men of wisdom, no news of this universe is news alone. But every news has an aspect of do or don't and every news has a lesson behind it. Hence, every event narrated in the Holy Quran has a lesson for us to learn. 
So Sayyiduna Yunus salam, lived for three days in the belly of the fish. It was dark, very dark inside. In the darkness, he called out to his Lord, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minad dhalimeen. There is no God but you. Glory be to you. Surely I have been of the evildoers. فَاسْتَجَبَنَا لَهُ وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمِّ وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And so we answered him and delivered him from grief. And thus do we deliver the believers. Will every believer go into a fish's belly? Does the last sentence imply that every believer, every mu'min will be swallowed by a fish into its belly? And will he make this prayer to be rescued by Allah from there? La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu dhalimin. No. But this verse means that whenever a believer is surrounded by any kind of darkness, any kind of darkness of sin, surrounded by any darkness of sin, of any situation, of any evil, evil of any kind, let him call out to Allah, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minad dhalimeen. Just as Allah delivered Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam from the belly of the fish, from the three days of darkness, he will deliver the believer from grief, from his predicament, and from the darkness that surrounds him. Call out to him. Thus the people who are surrounded by the darkness of base self, people who are surrounded by the darkness of the nafs and the carnal desires, who are surrounded by the darkness of the self and sin, should seek solution in this dua and call upon this being, Call upon this being who created the soul, who created the nafs, and who is the creator of light and the creator of darkness, the creator of piety and the creator of evil. He should pray, O oh Allah, you created them, so you alone put them away from me. He will deliver you. The Prophet ﷺ made his tigfar 70 times. To repeat, repentance is such a thing that even if it is violated, man must make it again and again and again all his life. Where do we think we stand? The Prophet ﷺ said, I make his take far. I beg Allah for his forgiveness 70 times a day. Mind you, he was innocent of sin. Allah had told him that even if he forgot something, he was forgiven already. In spite of that, he made a stick far 70 times a day, a stick far for a previous rank. Our elders have said that the Prophet وسلم, made a stick far because his rank was elevated, elevated every moment. When he came to a higher rank, he made a stick far for the previous rank, which he regarded as a sin in comparison to the new rank. This means that we must make a stick far every moment. Every time we make a mistake, we must make a stick far. We must keep doing it till Allah lets you get the upper hand. Only you must persist. The devil's ploy is weak. The Quran says, Inna kaida shaytani kana dhaifa. Inna kaida shaytani kana dhaifa. Surely the guile of the shaitan is ever weak. On the face of it, he looks very terrible and fearful. But if anyone stands up to him, he gives in. Some people shout a lot and boss people are wrong. But when anyone stands up to them, they turn tails. This is what the president of Russia did after initially bragging a lot. Allah has created the nafs, the soul and the devil in the same way. Initially, it seems very different to fight them. But when man stands firm against the nafs and shaitan, they surrender. Do not therefore worry, but make amends every time you commit a sin. Tauba is to return. The literal meaning of tauba, tabayatubo, is to return. That's the man who has gone astray. 
It's asked to return, return. Allah says, when you return, when you make tawbah, I too will return, meaning I will relent and forgive you. Thus, every time you return, Allah will relent. May Allah cause us to make tawbah often. Amin. Wa akiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Social expectation drowns us all inside. What you have should be what I want. Cause what I have just ain't alright. The clothes I wear, the way I comb my hair, how I live, oh.